The most common data are the, the suspended sediment. Um, and so when I plot those, or when we get those, we often plot them against flow. And so we have what we call a flow load relationship. So for a particular flow, we can kind of come up with a relationship of what's the load for a particular flow. But that those data often have a lot of scatter. Um, so that if you plot uh, the, sed the suspended sediment data against the flow, sometimes we call it a data cloud mm -hmm. instead of a rating curve because it, it just does, it has a, like an order of magnitude of scatter. So um, I guess, why is there so much scatter in sediment data? Great question. So there, there's a few reasons for scatter. For, so first of all, sediment itself is highly variable. Yeah. Um, you know, we have many videos showing how sediment, sediment doesn't move necessarily in a very uniform way down a channel. Right. Complete, it's not completely well mixed in a channel. It doesn't just move in one big slug. Often you've got, you know, boils and plumes and things like that moving. And we can see that in our data. And so you could be there at one point in time and then come back and measure five minutes later and the conditions could be totally different and, and where your sampling could be totally different and you could be picking up something very different than you did before. The, the, you know, the first time I saw that was in a flume actually. We were in a flume and I was measuring every five minutes and it, it, like my answer was zero sediment is traveling through this flume because if you if you sample every five minutes you miss the pulses and yeah. all of the masses in the pulses and to, I, like I imagine that's the same in rivers then yeah absolutely and it, one of the videos is really interesting it shows with um, sonar how you can see you know plumes of sediment moving in the Mississippi River and how and at the same time how a, a sampler um, is moved through that and oh, how. Wow. You know, depending on the timing of that movement, you could capture something very different. So that is one big source of uncertainty and variability is that real variability in how sediment moves in rivers. Um, the and, other, and, and that's not just variability from like year to year or day to day. You're talking about like within a minute or within, within a certain process or bed form or yes. like um, with intra-hour variability. Absolutely, right. yeah. And then, uh, you know, along those same lines, what you mentioned is there's variability in season and year. Yeah, you right. know, you have a really wet year, you have a lot of runoff, a lot of sediment transport. Um, you could measure something very different than you would the following year. Maybe you have a dry year. So that seasonal variability and year-to-year uh, -year variability drives a lot of things too, and that's really important. So that that's a really, that's a reason why we collect data over long periods of time is to try to understand yeah. those drivers and, and what causes those things to change over different years and different, um, um, different hydrologic conditions. So that was an excerpt from an episode that Molly and I recorded for the RSM River Mechanics podcast. For the full conversation or other episodes with river and sediment subject matter experts, check out the podcast link or the podcast website down in the description.